Hello everyone, welcome to today's class. Today we have a challenge before us on the board. The question says, which is greater between 1000 to the power of 1001 and 1001 to the power of 1000? Now, if the figures were simpler, like 5 to the power of 6 or 6 to the power of 5, then we can easily use our calculator to compute that and we'll get our answer straightforward. To tell us which is greater or which is lesser but as you can see from this challenge the question of uh, the figures are, are huge so what do we do here so we're going to make use of some laws to prove which of these is greater or lesser okay so let's go to the bird you have selection do not forget this is all i must tv where we learn mathematics all the time so if you've not subscribed do well to subscribe in order to increase this community. Okay, when you subscribe, turn on bell notification button so that you get notified whenever we drop an amazing video like the one you're about to watch right now. So let's go straight to our question. So we're looking at this question now. So for this, like I said before, the figure is so huge that if you impute this into your calculator, it might give you some error, okay? So what is the law that we enable us to show that either this or this is greater? Okay, so the law says that, okay, it's a theorem. So let's take the theorem. So we have a theorem. And theorem. If A and B, A and B, okay, are, um, okay, are uh, numbers, A and B are numbers greater, greater than or equal equal to e okay equal to e our constant here and your a x is less than b then our b to the power of a will be less than your a to the power of b so from here you can see that the answer to um, this question is playing out already but there are conditions to this theory okay this theorem is only true when b to the power of 1 all over b is less than a to the power of 1 all over a, okay? So this theorem, we hold water if and only if your b to the power of 1 all over b, okay, is less than your a to the power of 1 all over a. So this is the condition. So do not just jump into conclusion that, oh, this is now less than this. Is this condition met? So how do we show if this condition is actually correct or met with this expression or this question we have in Yena? So we have to prove a function. So suppose we have a function. Now we have f of x, all right, is equal to x. So we must be able to prove that this function is an increasing function. That is the only ground we can assume or succumb to this establishment. Now, if we have f of x is equal to z, and I want to rewrite the right-hand side of the equation. So what do I do here? So I can introduce my e to this system here. So I'm having here e to the power of ln, okay, of this function here, which is x to the power of 1 all over x. Remember this, so this and this will cancel out to give us this expression here back again. So all I need to do is to apply the um, laws of indices and move the whole of this expression back for here. So if I do that, so this expression will give me your e to the power of 1 all over x dot your n of x here. Is that not so? So question two will give us here your e to the power of ln of x all over X. Now, if you look at this function very well, you know, we're having our f of x here you now. So if you look at this function very well, this is um, a decreasing function. All right. So this being a decreasing function within the interval of e and your infinity, okay? So this decreasing function is within the interval of e and our infinity. So all we need to do is to find the f of f prime. So we have here the f prime of x. So how do we find the f prime of this, which is this function here? So automatically, this will give us um, um, x times 1 all over x minus ln of x all over x squared. 
this this leaves so we have this to be one minus ln of x all over x squared this is equal to zero so at this point you discover that our e is equal to our x here of course it's a critical number right so with this proof now we'll be able to show that here your um a sorry uh where are we b to the power of a less than a to the power of b is well established so thus we cannot say so thus we cannot say that our one thousand and one to the power of one thousand okay is less than um our one thousand to the power of your know, one thousand and one okay but again we have to note this all right that if we have two numbers a and b and they exist between zero and e okay and a is less than b then um from there we're going to have it to be that your a to the power of b will be less than b to the power of a so it will not work the other way around okay although we still have another critical condition that another critical condition in which we cannot actually tell whether a to the power of b is less than b to the power of a or b to the power of a is less than um uh, a to the power of b so what is that situation for instance if we have two numbers and they exist between this limit that to have one less than your a less than e less than b then in this regard it is unfortunate or it is uncertain to tell whether your a to the power of b is less than b to the power of a or b to the power of um a is less than a to the power of b so these are some of the critical situations we must consider in try to know which figure is higher when a is raised to b or and b raised to a so if you lost something from this video tutorial give the video a thumbs up and you have a better way of proving this drop it in the comment section so that we can equally learn from you remember this is jigs and this is online mass tv where we learn mathematics all the time i love you and every one of us at online mass tv loves you bye for now